don't do I don't do exercise. I don't do exercise well. All right. Yeah, no, that's not nice. Yeah, a little bit. Two club wind. Should be interesting. What's up, guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to, you know, when you talk about Kyle making certain plays, I think you look at other guys as well. You know, Matt making the, the correct read, the throws, the protection was there. Um, so there's a lot of things that happened and transpired in that game uh, that we can take the good from, and there's things we obviously can teach from. And again, it's, it comes down to everybody, you know, doing what their coach should do and doing it fundamentally sound and under – Certain types of pressure, you know, you hope they rely back in their fundamentals, and, and guys seem to do that. And our goal is to ha make sure that happens every play. But how, or how did you all feel you and uh, Coach Art getting the receivers back? Does that open up some things for you all also? Yeah, it's one of those things where, again, we obviously want to have a healthy team, healthy offense for us. Um, it's great to get guys back. It just brings up the competition. Um, the energy, guys, and, and guys did a great job when certain guys were out. Um, other guys just stepped up, and doesn't mean when guys come back that you you look at your role any different. You go out there every day and try to compete, and that's what I love about this group is um, regardless who's out there, what personnel in practice or games, uh, there's a belief that guys are going to go out there and do their job, and, and that's what we're trying to help them do every day as coaches. As Carolina's defense, uh, you know, I know they got problems, uh, other problems elsewhere, but Burns and Brown and yeah, again, it's another week, broken record for me. It, I have nothing but respect for what uh, what they do defensively. Um, I had a chance last year to play against this defense, um, and then obviously now being in the division with them. Um, so, again, you look at their personnel, you look at their scheme. Um, one of my former teammates is a coach over there. I know how well he prepares his guys. So it's one of those things where it's a great challenge uh, for us. And, um, you know, it's a division game. We're at home going against a defense that flies around, plays fast, uh, makes you earn everything. And so it's going to be a great challenge for us. How do you think you guys have been inside the uh, red zone? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, each week you try to strive to, to go down there and score touchdowns. Um, one of those situations where, you know, that's not always going to be the case. Like, for instance, before the half, right? Um, you know, you can consider sometimes you're in the red zone like at the end of the game before the half, and your goal was to kick the field goal to win the game, or your goal was the time was running out and kick the field goal and go in at halftime with three points. Um, so sometimes that plays into your red zone thoughts. Um, otherwise, though, I mean, I'm sure like everybody, you want to go down there, you want to be effective, you want to score points, but more importantly, I've just been involved in too many games with a four-point swing, where if you don't score that touchdown and, you're, and you kick that field goal, it seems to come back and get you. Um, so, again, our goal is to go down there and make sure that we get touchdowns instead of field goals. But more importantly, score points, but, but get touchdowns if we can. Yeah, I mean, I think most guys, right, on the offensive side of the ball are excited. Um, they know there's an opportunity to score. Uh, again, it's one of those things where you stay in the moment, understand what your job is, and do it to the best of your ability fundamentally. But, yeah, again, I think, I think anybody who's played since they were old enough to put a helmet on or in flag football, you love scoring touchdowns. Regardless if you're blocking for them or you're scoring them or you're throwing them, it doesn't matter. I think that does, it does entice and get energized people. But, again, we go back to the fact that just do what you're asked to do. Do it fundamentally sound. Don't try to make a play that's not there. And, you know, hopefully good things happen. I'm sorry, what did you say? How do you get Calvin going a little bit more? You know, for us, you know, it goes to what I think we've done, what we're trying to do offensively is, again, we go out there with, you know, all different people and personnels. Um, we preach competition. Uh, we preach when your number's called to, to make a play if it's, if it's there. Uh, if it's not, then the quarterback's taught to move on. So, again, it's one of those things where, you know, we go into each game. We put guys in certain positions during the play. Uh, if the coverage dictates it, great. Um, if not, you know, we hope to find a completion. So 
to answer your question in a roundabout way, it's more about making sure this offense functions as a whole. Um, and again, guys get what they get when the coverage dictates it, and guys make plays when they have the opportunity. And again, I think you can see that throughout the last couple of weeks, different guys have stepped up for us uh, when the ball has been thrown to them or when we hand it off to them. So again, it's more of a, a whole approach um, than anything else. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I can answer this from this standpoint with Calvin and anybody else. At the end of the day, like sometimes numbers, the ball goes to a guy, doesn't go to a guy, what's considered uh, the catch, not a catch, all that. What our guys have done for us specifically up to this point is they've given full effort. And so when you give full effort, you go out there and, and you play to the best of your ability. Sometimes, you know, statistically, it comes out a different way. Sometimes it doesn't. But the way everybody has approached the game so far for us offensively, I just love where the guys are at with their energy and everything else. I'm looking at the very last play that Kyle made in that fourth quarter where it was Howard in coverage, and then they had safety help over at the top. Um, and there was 0.4 yards of separation for Kyle, and Matt dropped in the right. dime. Right. I mean, to, from your perspective, the growth of trust Matt Ryan going to Kyle Pitts in that moment when y'all needed a big play. I mean, what can you kind of say about the fact that he was willing to kind of drop it in there on a 50-50 ball? Like yeah, sure. I, it goes back to the execution just in general, right? I mean, to your point with those ridiculous numbers of how much space a guy has to catch it. And it goes back to the fact that, you know, Matt has been able to put the ball where he needs to put it because he's had time up front and guys are where they're supposed to be. And again, I just go back to the standpoint of when guys do what they're asked to do and not do anything more, the ball sometimes goes where it goes. But in that situation, you know, Matt obviously walked up. He liked the situation where he could throw it to, and he put it only where really Kyle can make the play. And again, it's a credit to going through what his progression was. It's a credit to Kyle and the guys up front blocking for him, but Kyle being where he's supposed to be. And again, I think that's where good offenses go. I think at the end of the day, when you don't know exactly where the ball is going and a defense has to cover all the eligibles, I think it's harder to, to defend things like that than when you know where the ball is going to a certain guy. Um, and I've been a part of that in offenses past where you know got certain guys were only getting targets. And I thought defensively at times it's probably easier to take one guy away than take five. So again, we want everybody out there thinking they have a chance. And I think there was a stat last game I'm probably going to be wrong in this, but the first nine completions went to eight different guys or something like that. I mean, again, if you're a defense looking at us, you know, you have to obviously cover the whole field. And again, that's our goal is to, to give the guys out there who are eligible receivers a chance to get the football and make the defense cover everybody. Well, I mean, I can only speak to from when he's got here and the standpoint of what I saw on film when I was doing him coming out of college, right? So that was obviously, I believe, the, what was it, the 18 draft? Yeah, so, I mean, that was obviously another heavy quarterback draft. Uh, we had just taken a quarterback in one of my previous lives, the spot I was at. And so I knew we weren't necessarily in that position. But as a quarterback coach, you still want to have a library of evaluations. And again, what you saw with Josh was you saw the arm talent. You saw the ball come out of his hand. Um, you know, good-sized quarterback. You could tell he was very intelligent. We didn't spend a ton of time with him, but you could just tell the way he played the game. Um, and then obviously, he's been in different spots. He's been around different quarterback rooms. I know guys who've been with him as coach. I know guys have been with him as a teammate. And when he got here, the one thing I can say about that is there was three or four people, coaches slash players, who reached out to me the minute we signed Josh and talked about him as a person, talked about him as a player, um, and everything was on the plus side of the person and the player. And again, what we ask these guys to do, no different than any other positions, to come in and be humble, learn, be coachable. And, and Josh has come in and done that. Um, he runs the, the scout team. He helps prepare Matt, and he helps him prepare himself. So, so far, right, from what we've seen, again, our, our time with him and, and mine specifically, 
um, you know, Josh has done everything we've asked him to do. I never hear I that name. The name, though. Oh. I only know CP. CP. I don't even know. <laughs> and CP will probably kill me for this. I don't even want to mess up how you say his first name. So I just go with CP. Or, or, or just C. I just go C. What do we got here, bro? Okay, so anyway, so right. you win him last year. You, you've, been, you've still been very glowing without him. Why has it worked so well in this offense this year when it hasn't necessarily been your most dominant offense the last year? Yeah, I, I don't. It's a good question. Fair. I don't want to speak about previous offenses and how we used them. I just say with I can talk about CP here. Um, what I see is what I saw with my previous relationship with him. Um, a guy that comes out football savvy, plays hard. Teammates like to be around him. He likes to be around his teammates. Um, and he's a, a piece that you can move around. And I think with the football in his hand, I think obviously he can either make you miss or try to go through you. And he can also, what we've done, as you can see on film or the games, you can line him up outside. And he was drafted in the first round as a wide receiver. Um, again, I've had multiple years with him. So not that changes anything. I just, you know, I know him. I've always had an affinity for him. I tried in previous spot I was in, we tried to sign him and we didn't even get him. And he moved on. And then again, um, I just appreciate the way he plays football. Is, that, is there a correlation between how he is able to Yeah, that's another good question. That's a good question. I, I would like to, even though I've done neither in my life, I would, that's probably a great question for him. You think there's probably correlation. Um, but, yeah, I've never had to return a kick or, or run the ball like that. But, again, there's lanes, there's vision, there's things you feel. Um, at the end of the day, that's, you know, only he could probably answer that. But I'd like to think there's some correlation. Right. Carry over into the, into the building and meetings. Yeah, I mean, they have a previous relationship. They knew each other. Um, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but it, from the outside looking in, it seems like a tight room. Um, they pull for each other. That's just not just those two. You got Keith and you got Q in there. Um, and you could tell that that room, just like other rooms, pretty close. And when you have close rooms, um, guys don't care who gets the credit. Guys are pulling for each other, but more importantly, they're competing with each other. But it's a healthy competition. And it just makes each other or that whole room better. And obviously, that's a utopian goal for coaches to have a, co a competing room that pushes each other, but also pulls for each other. Um, and again, those guys from their previous experiences, you could tell there's a relationship there. And you know they want it to see each other do well. What do you remember about them like from that second half to 19? Yeah, I mean. You were there. I was. I, there's things I block out in life. Um, that was not, we didn't have a good run at, you know, we bounced back, but it wasn't a good run at times. Um, just no different. Just, you could tell the, you know, cared for each other, friendship, you know, had a re healthy respect for each other's ability, which I think is awesome. Um, but again, wanting each other to do well. You, yeah. Are you good? Are you impressed with what CP's done? I know you said you've tried to get him before, but the season he's had when it's the second, he's got the second most yards and scrimmage in his career. Are you impressed with what he's doing, or are you, is this something you expect? I don't know the, the best way to answer that. In, in my mind, look, I, I think CP can do just like we have multiple players. So it's fun about this offense. You've got multiple players who can do multiple things, right? CP just happens to get some of that attention just because of what he's doing right now. Uh, the reality is, like I said before, he was drafted to be one thing. He's been in multiple spots. He's morphed into other things. Um, but again, the best example and phrase I can give you is just a good football player. So whatever he goes out and does, you know, I know what kind of player he is. I know what kind of person he is. You know, I just want the best, just like for everybody else, just want the best for him. But again, I'm, I'm happy for anybody that has success, specifically if they're in Atlanta Falcons. Look, there's, there's certain parts of seasons where you're like, man, I don't want to remember part of that because of the losses or whatever happened. But, um, yeah, my memory is probably not there where it needs to be. Ah, all right. <laughs>